Welcome to Dharma Gems with Hogan Bays Roshi, co-abbot of Great Vow Zen Monastery and Heart of Wisdom Zen Temple in Portland, Oregon. Today, Hogan addresses the ethics of killing from mice to men and women. A real ethical issue when you've got a situation like that, do you just poison them all? Do you trap them all? If you trap them, release them, you have to trap them and take them away at least a mile or two away, or they'll just walk right back in. Do you, you, do you give, have a heart traps, in which case you're spending your entire day cycling mice? Or do you uh, get the snap traps that just you know, kill them and keep them from, from breeding? Um, one year when I was very young, we had lived out in the country and we had rats in the house. And we were very conscious of the precept not to kill, but to cherish all life. So we really said, okay, we're not going to kill these rats. We'll either live in harmony with them or else we'll try to see if we can get them to go away. And um, we are probably 23, something like that. Well, you know what happens with rats is they don't, they don't quietly walk away in the night and they get more and more enthusiastic. And then we had our first child and suddenly we realized that the rats were everywhere. And one night uh, we had a bowl of, uh, of nuts and fruit on top of the refrigerator and the rats got up there, threw all the fruit and nuts off the top of the refrigerator and kind of disappeared it. I realized, oh my goodness, they have, they have taken over at that point. So then between the, the finally the realizing how intense the rat life was and finally being uh, aware and sensitive to our, our young child, we said, we've got, to, we've got to do something. So we actually put out uh, poison and we must have killed two dozen rats in this house. And we just kept collecting rat carcasses for a couple of weeks. But what do you do? You know, it's a real big ethical dilemma. What do you do? And in that case, I felt quite like we had, we had done our best to uh, mitigate the situation without killing them, but it hadn't worked. So we all have a, a murderer in us of some sort. What makes the, the dilemma of the rat or the mouse in one's home immediate and present, whereas the dilemma of all of the suffering, starving, brutalized people on the other side of the world isn't. Yeah, well, that's, that's the question, isn't it? Um, because if we can do that with rats, and if people become irritating enough to us or threatening enough to us, well, why don't we do it with people? I mean, that's the, the logical uh, kind of movement. And I think that, that, that if we become more and more hard-hearted and we become less and less sensitive and becomes less and less of an ethical dilemma and less and less of a struggle, the struggle kind of moves from mice to rats to large animals to human beings. And we start, instead of kind of keeping the struggle intimate and personal, the struggle becomes universal. Um, so I think there's some, some virtue in acknowledging that we all have these difficult, difficult places in ourselves. We all have the capacity for stealing and robbing and killing. We all have the capacity for this conduct of every sort. But if we are aware of how intimate and personal it is, we can work with it at that level. If we are blind to that, if we go unconscious about our own potential, our own possibility, then it actually gets expressed out in the world and we're dealing with it at that level. You know? So our own cupidity, our own stupidity. So. Some would say that we have a structure that actually does that to human beings by using other parts of the world as resources to support the lifestyle that we think is necessary. Yeah, yeah, isn't that amazing? I mean, we're all culpable <clears throat> at many different levels. It's not, not as a matter of it's those people over there or out there that are doing this. It is us. You know, as Poco said, we've met the enemy and he is us. I always love that line. On the other hand, there is, the, there is what the, the transcendental truth, which is a different level of truth and needs to be also appreciated. That we didn't make ourselves in a way this way. We, we have been shaped 
this particular brain, why aren't we made to, to be perfectly harmonious human beings? Why aren't we made to live together like, like uh, it seems, trees in a forest? Even though there's competition for light and, and space, nonetheless, trees in a forest seem to, to live together very harmoniously and, and fit together. And yet, our evolution didn't happen that way. Was it because of my choice or your choice? What, what, what's, the, what's the genesis of this uh, aggressive realm that we are in? And you know, if we look at the six realms, I'm sorry, I'm just going on. The, if we look at the six realms of existence, they are different realms. So one realm of existence is that of of a struggle and uh, struggle with ourselves, struggle with our neighbors. And we first have at human level the struggle with, with suffering and survival, but then if we kind of rise up to the Asura level, to the, the fighting gods level, I always think of that as being incredibly aggressive, powerful business people or governments who are very well off and well endowed and have lots of resources, but they are struggling and fighting with one another to get, a, to get ahead. And to get into the God realm, which is you know, a different realm, um, but that very that very struggle uh, for success, for dominance, is the the hallmark of that particular realm of existence. Thank you. Please visit our website at zendas.org for more information about our workshops, retreats, and opportunities to practice.